Hello everyone and thank you for coming back to the channel. We're going to be discussing briefly Candy and the Game Episode 6 Season 1. Okay, we have Don One receives news about Brian's sobriety. Candy visits Safari and growing concerns over her and Philip's, I mean Patrick's relationship. Todd agrees to work a shift in the kitchen. But soon realizes he can't handle it. Okay, he can't handle the heat. We all knew that. But he had to go in and talk about it himself. Uh, <clears throat> and see what it was really like. But we're just going to get on into it a little bit here. On the first scene that came out, we had Miss Pearl and Miss Cheryl. I don't know uh, where the senior citizens came from with the big butts. I think it was just something... They just orchestrated it in there or in the scene to give us a laugh, a little chuckle. But it was hilarious. The big booty older senior citizens women, Miss Pearl and Miss Cheryl, graced our screen this evening, okay? Then we got <coughs> Brian cracking jokes here and there, going about his day in the uh, OLG restaurant. Uh, we got Shades by Drika, Shandrika, meaning she started her own... Um, Shades line, which I don't think she did. I think she just went to AliExpress or whomever, bought some shades off a website, and she sold them, you know, for herself. But it, Tori, Torin is sporting a pair, and she's liking it, and this, that, and the third. And <coughs> she wants to talk to Torin a little bit about the comings and goings on how she got caught on telling the business about Todd and Candy don't care about their employees or their business. And she just tells Tori to come on outside with her while they can discuss the things. Now, of course, she's thinking uh, Patrick or Melvin dropped the dime on her. But Shandrika is stupid. She's about as stupid as rocks, okay? But it just is as it, just is as it is. But anyway, Tori um, tries to appease her. They go out to the parking lot, get in the back of Torian's truck, and they talk over the comings and goings. And I'm like, Shandrika, you really going to leave your spot? Nobody's going to be there to be the hostess to actually ask somebody, can they be seated and this, that, and the third. You're just going to leave your spot like that. And even Torn was like, girl, you ain't got nobody coming in your spot. And she's like, oh, that's okay. It's, it's, it's fine. So we already see her oh, being without a job come season two. <laughs> or, or should be without a job, I should say. Okay? Because she's not taking her job serious at all. Uh, then we got Patrick and Melvin and Shadrico talking to Torian about Candy coming after her. Or she's talking to Torian about she felt Patrick and Melvin went back and dropped dime on her. When in actuality, no, they had her on camera calling out everybody. Okay, just is what it is. Then we got Candy comes over to see Patrick. Okay, in Melvin's apartment, and she talks to both men, trying to catch up with both of them. And, of course, Patrick is telling Candy about Safari, don't want him to have a housewarming party. And Candy looking at him very motherly and saying, you know, is she stupid? Is she crazy? Are you stupid? Are you crazy? You really going to let a woman tell you what to do? They're supposed to be in support of you and whatever you want to do that makes you happy. And you should be the same for her. So, of course, <clears throat> What's his name? Patrick jumped ship real quick, fast, and her and got on Candace's team about, you know, you right. I'm going to have my uh, housewarming party. And I'm like, it, it's always about Patrick. He does not include Melvin in any of these decisions that he's trying to do for their apartment. I find it very curious and find it very weird. Okay. <clears throat> but anyway, Candy goes on. She wants to see where the men sleep. And, you know, she thinks the apartment is very roomy. And it's, it's very much so cute coming together. And this, that, and the third. But she doesn't like the fact that um, Patrick is taking too much of um, Safari's advice. And not actually listening to his own heart. And so, uh, she's making a plan of action to go and see how Miss uh, Safari is really getting down. And what she really feels about her cousin, which she has, in a sense, adopted him as her son, pretty much. She says he reminds her, meaning Patrick, of her brother that had got killed a long, long time ago. And she just had a soft spot, spot in her heart for him and don't want him to ever be mistreated. 
and she said she holds a spot with um melvin because melvin came to live with her at her home and she pretty much raised him <clears throat> from a young kid on up to where he is now so she's kind of like between the cousin and the mama scene but she don't want nobody messing with her two men her two young men at that so uh, patrick is so damn confused with his life and and how he needs to be uh presented in society and i'm like girl that's a hot mess all together he's just a hot mess and i'm birthed to know he's a hot mess because that's her grandson but i'm like he needs to stop acting like he's so cute i mean he's giving me portia tease but the man version you see what i'm saying he's giving me portia williams tease but the man version but i'm pretty sure candy will straighten things out before she lets things go too far between him and safari for the negative all right then we got don one shows candy the ring camera of course he's always using that as exhibit a and <clears throat> uh what's his name um rashad had talked to a brandon no rashad had talked to uh don juan about shandrika going around him trying to find out who said this that and the third about the comings and goings of how she got caught and saying you know Tad, todd and candy don't give a shit about the employees of the restaurant and uh <clears throat> Don want to tell her tells him don't worry about it he'll address her later on but <laughs> in the meantime in between time we got uh, Don Juan dropping dive on Brandon and Dominique they doing a little smoochy and a little touchy feely uh, not really getting it on as we can call in between the sheets but they were doing a lot of foreplay and Todd said, see that's what I'm talking about. We, we can't have that. And then Candy's trying to take up for the situation. So we were doing the same thing. I'm like, yeah, but Candy, we weren't seeing it. It's a difference when you want to put shit on TV and it's being shown <coughs> versus y'all are on the same set filming, but we ain't catching y'all doing nothing. See what I'm saying? Cause I'm pretty sure Barbara would have had a problem with that as well. It's called ethics. It's called morals. It's called how <coughs> you present yourself within a company. All right. But we're going to let that slide. Uh, <coughs> pretty much, <coughs> Qatar was saying, what well, I'm got to go. Both of them can go, but one of them definitely got to go. So <coughs> that was what was going on with that scenario. And uh, Patrick, not Patrick, um, Philip was a part of that conversation as well. And he. Uh, concurred with the conclusion that one of them have to go okay and I don't understand have y'all been noticing when candy show starts it has that uh, as above so below type reference to it where it's flipped I don't know my conspiracy theories probably would know more about it but it, it was just weird I've never seen that in her stuff and I don't understand why she's uh, submitting it as as you know <coughs> what's done above is being done below <coughs> kind of like the Baphomet type thing but we're gonna let that go I'm just putting it out there for my conspiracy theory people but check it out next time it comes on and y'all see what I'm talking about okay then we got uh okay that's when we got Don Juan and um uh, Philip are meeting with Todd and Candy and they're talking about uh the employees and stuff of that nature um uh, Don Juan goes and tells Candy and Todd that um Pebbles or this girl that's close to <coughs> Brian that he had a whole case of wine in his uh what do you call it in his backpack and they're concerned because brian had definitely let everybody know even america or internationally or locally on candy show that he was dealing with depression and anxiety and he was misusing uh drugs to compensate for how he was really feeling and uh, you could tell when they were taping the scene that um, Brian was feeling some kind of way. Like he was antsy about answering the questions of this, that, and the third. And it wasn't a good scene. It wasn't a good look. And I don't think Don Juan confronted uh, Brian the correct way. Uh, by coming out like saying I know this this that and third about you and this person told me this that third about you. And what are we going to do about this situation? And you know. Don Juan was kind of getting a little, um, 
uh, aggressive about the situation. And I'm like, well, my thing is pretty much if Brian brought it to you all to the forefront, then it's your, your, um, it's you, it's put on you because you're the employer to see how you can help this young person. You know, you got an employee's line for substance abuse. You should have a program where he could connect with other people such as counselors that can help him with it because the duty falls on the employer now. Since uh, both parties uh, have rec um, have rectified the situation or come to know about the situation so some reconciliation has to be done if you're going to keep this young brother in your establishment you're going to have to provide some type of resources for him to uh for him to be able to cope with his situation and deal with the stressors of being um addicted to substances and, and you know it was just like real stupid for brian to say you know he got it under control he ain't doing the uh pills anymore and he's not doing the vodka just that and the third but he's drinking wine <laughs> like wine is a depressant as well uh brother brian and it seems like don juan wasn't the one to really help him it's like you need to push him on and, and let him understand the deficit he's in and how he will put the restaurant and Todd and Candy in a deficit of uh, responding to his needs. Don Juan should have said something like, okay, since we know of this concern that you have for your mental health and for your uh, su substance abuse issues, we're going to have to... Uh, mandate that you go to a AA meeting because Brian said he he that's not that don't fit him the AA meetings and all this other stuff he can't deal with it that way he has to uh make sure he mix wine with what he's doing and let the other stuff go and he's cool he's good and you could tell Brian was really anxious like something just was really off with him but then again Don Juan stood stood his ground as well as Philip and say look there is issues we have with your concern of substance abuse and you've letting us know about it we've talked about it and we are glad that you're wanting help but this is the correct type of help and resources we're going to put you under and if you fail to comply with our mandated um uh concerns of where we want you to go to help you with your problem then we're going to have to terminate you you know and put it just that blunt we it's, it's almost like you're forcing him to do something and to definitely make himself aware that he has this problem and you know being a responsible employer you have to say this 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 has got to happen in order for this 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 not to happen you know what i'm saying and if he couldn't get with those rules and regulations then you have to kiss him goodbye but at least he was offered the resources and the mandate that he has to follow this to the letter in order to continue to be an employee at OLG. I wish Don Juan would have did that. But he pretty much just had a conversation with him. Brian pretty much lied saying he got it under control. He's not this. He's not that. He's not doing this. He's not that. You know, and, and it's all false. You could tell it's all false. But I think Don Juan did a very piss poor uh presentation of how he was going to try to handle this situation but hopefully um once he looks back at everything and he's gotten a lot of feedback on what he should have done maybe he can correct it and it going forward it could be better suited for uh brian's concerns he do have with uh the drinking okay and then we um we go from there to <clears throat> Don Juan pretty much presenting to uh, the OLG ladies because they come over also and Canada was just finishing up talking about Brian's and his sob sobriety and Dominique and uh, Brandon's situation. <coughs> when they come in and you know they address them about uh, since it's their restaurant as well you know the OLG the concept the conception of the idea that brought it to fruition was Taz. But he has to, you know, do his uh, crossing of his T's, dotting of his I's by letting the three women uh, understand what they're doing, trying to go forward to put more money 
into uh, the business so they can draw out the money for all their uh, hard work and uh, talents. So they talked to them about um, a set of Aunt Bertha coming in with her own cake, you know, from the house. We need to find vendors that can make up the recipes and they can sell them at the restaurant as well as serve it to the uh, consumers. And, you know, they were thinking about selling the spices uh, and some other cool stuff. Uh, condiments and as well. Uh, that's been a bestseller in the restaurant. They felt it was good. It was nice. And uh, they moved on from that idea. So I guess they're going to be implementing those changes and uh, have them for the public to definitely partake of at their home. Okay. Let me see what else we got here. Ah, but they really need a real HR person and not Don Juan filling in as an HR person. Because I, I don't understand. I'm going to keep talking about it until they put it into fruition or implement something. They need to have an office. Everything don't need to be out in the open. This, that, and the third. And that's just how I feel. No office is being shown with no doors and no you know, closed in environment. But anyway... If the ears here, then, you know, it is what it is. Then we got uh, Safari comes over to uh, Patrick and Melvin's apartment. She's bringing little flowers and a rug and this, that, and the third. And I'm like, this is a hot mess. Can we please not see any more of uh, Safari? Because she's looking like a, uh, a child that's trying to tame uh, an animal of some sort. And, you know, she's just insecure. And it shows real bad. Okay, uh, let's see here. Uh, 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 birthday's good. Okay, then we go to the, the uh, Brandon part where they sit down and talk to uh, Brandon about his comings and goings and what they don't caught on camera of him and Dominique doing behind closed doors, which they shouldn't have been doing. And they pretty much <laughs> once brandon to tell them how he's going to handle this situation and of course brandon goes on and say well we can um basically just transfer her <laughs> dominique he wants to transfer dominique and he don't want to move and go nowhere they like oh no 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 sir even patrick even say oh no 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 sir and i'm thought patrick phillip and uh no one said no that's not going to be an option uh, no, we were talking about you leaving and going to another restaurant, which, as Philip says, it wasn't an option at first, but now the option is a doable situation. And, um, Don Juan was telling him, no, nah, we can't move, uh, uh, Dominique. You know, she's going to stay put. Uh, that's not a doable thing. We are not going to even upset that balance. We, we need you to pretty much go. And, uh, they just let him uh think about it for a while or whatever but they've made their observation of what they feel that uh brandon needs to get on board and do but of course he runs his little raggedy ass on over there to dominique when she's doing her uh dancing because she's getting ready to go on tour with rick ross in london and she's trying to make it do what it needs to do and she tries to learn some steps here and there with the choreographer so you know she just tells him to wait outside pretty much and he doesn't wait outside so uh the choreographer just said oh let's just take a five or ten minute break meaning so um uh, dominique can go talk to brandon on why the hell he came to their uh her set or her rehearsal unannounced okay so they go outside and brandon goes on and try to tell her what's going on he had met with uh philip and um don juan and they were uh, saying this, that, and the third about the relationship. Is it a relationship? Because it seems like it's it's a relationship, even if it's a situation ship where they just fucking, you know what I'm saying? Uh, but they really want to know from his mouth what was really going on. And, you know, he's trying to make light of it, this, that, and the third, trying to throw baby girl Dominique under the bus like she was an afterthought or whatnot. And he was, you know, pretty much saying, telling her what was going on. But he really was lying because he wasn't really giving the truth of what was really being said and what really needs to happen. And um, 
you know, she said, oh, so we getting fired then. And he's like, no, no, no. He said, well, you're dumping me then. And he says, oh, no, no, no. And, you know, it's just like, Dominique, run from this man. Run fast, quick, and a hurry from this man. Because he don't mean you no good. And I'm pretty sure after you watch it, once everything is done and said, y'all won't be together. Because he's basically a punk. I mean, he can't stand on ten toes down for you. When it comes to talking about the relationship that y'all do have. Because <coughs> he, he oh, if you just saw it, it was a travesty. It was a, a, a embarrassment. Uh, and him being a man and trying to shade off or try to save his own ass and throw you up under the bus is just totally piss poor. So quick, run fast in a hurry from this young man and hopefully you'll find someone that's better suited for your needs because Brandon has not, and I say it again, Brandon has not and is not for you. He's all about himself. Okay, because even a little simple job that he has as far as managing, he can't do that well. All right. So, uh, I don't know. Personally, I think um, Don Juan need to go on and let him go to Blaze. And they find somebody else to come over there because he shouldn't start a relationship in the first damn place. He even said he got the job just because he wanted to be near her. And how stupid is that? Oh, that's piss poor. That's piss poor. But really, that's all I had other than to tell y'all Todd fell miserably when he called and took up the challenge and wanted the OLG women in the kitchen with him so they could see how much he tried or how much he failed uh, with running the kitchen. He didn't know the comings and goings as Philip so eloquently stated that Todd does not, doesn't know anything about the running and operation of his businesses now that was a low key shade for me and a ass whooping at the same time but Todd wanted Philip on his team and Todd has got Philip on his team and Philip is really tearing into Todd about how much he does not know whether than saying what he do know <coughs> but it just is what it is because he'll never catch uh, Don Juan slipping so that's probably what he want to do and throw it in Candy's face because Candy does hold Don Juan in very high regard and high esteem because he definitely be moving and shaking for her when it comes to these business deals and cementing them in ink and on paper. So, but that's all I pretty much have for this video, guys. Hopefully, y'all like it. Love it. Gotta have more. And again, that was uh, season one, episode six. It's uh, titled Too Many Tuckers in the Kitchen. All right, and I will see y'all next video. Bye bye.